It has now been more than six years since the Airbus A350 XWB family entered service with Qatar Airways in January 2015. To date, Airbus has produced more than 400 examples of this modern and efficient twin-engine widebody. However, despite the aircraft's success, its design process was not without its complications. Let's examine when, how and why it was changed prior to its entry into service. Airbus's original proposal for the A350 series was based on its existing A330 family. The need for such an aircraft came about after Boeing had announced its next-generation 787 Dreamliner. However, it was only after airlines suggested the idea of a competitor for the Dreamliner that Airbus considered designing one. With this backing from airlines, Airbus eventually drew up a proposal for a so-called A330-200 Lite. It had planned to launch the proposal at the 2004 Farnborough Air Show, with a design featuring better aerodynamics than the original A330 family. Airbus also intended to deploy similar engine technology to that found on the Boeing 787. Although Airbus ultimately did not launch the A330-200 Lite at Farnborough that year, it proceeded with its development. This eventually saw it take on the A350 name, with two variants planned. At the time of its industrial launch in October 2005, these were the A350-800 with 250 seats across three classes and a range of 8,800 nautical miles or 16,300 kilometers, and the A350-900 with 300 seats across three classes and a range of 7,000 nautical miles or 13,900 kilometers. However, despite an order from Qatar Airways, this plan for the A350 came under fire from Lesser's ILFC and GCAS. These leasing companies were two of Airbus's largest customers, and their top leaders implored Airbus to instead develop the A350 as a clean-sheet project with a brand-new fuselage design. Singapore Airlines CEO at the time, Chu Chun Seng, said the following. Having gone through the trouble of designing a new wing, tail and cockpit, Airbus should have gone the whole hog and designed a new fuselage. Airbus eventually responded to the criticism by heeding this advice and redesigning the A350 with a brand new fuselage. Rather than retaining the A330's eight abreast cross-section, it redesignated the family as the A350 XWB or Extra Wide Body in July 2006. For most airlines, economy class seats nine passengers per row. However, Air Caraibas and French B have deployed a high-density tenor breast configuration for their economy classes. In any case, the redesign did the trick, with Singapore Airlines ordering 20 plus 20 options within four days of its redesignation. While the design change cost Airbus two years of delays and billions of dollars in additional expenses, it may have saved the program altogether. According to Airbus's latest orders and deliveries data, it has received more than 900 orders for the A350, of which it has delivered more than 400. Of this, 745 are for the Dash 900, of which 368 have been delivered, and 168 orders for the Dash 1000, of which 54 have been delivered. This leaves more than half of the A350's orders still outstanding. This, along with the potential for more to be placed going forward, suggests that the aircraft will remain a cornerstone of both the Airbus portfolio and the increasing drive towards twin-engine aircraft in the long-haul and ultra-long-haul domains for many years to come. Are you a fan of the Airbus A350 as it is today? Is there anything you wish Airbus would have done differently for its design? Let us know in the comments below. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles and a podcast every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe before you go.